first I have a little surprise for you. Uh, look there, right in front of you. Tombstone. Three of them. The first one is your mother. The second one is your brother. They're both sleeping soundly under them. And the third one... It is... It's mine. <laughs> Midnight, the witching hour when the night is darkest, our fears the strongest, and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a moment in The Man with the Black Beard. <laughs> Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Sigmund Miller is The Man with the Black Beard. A few minutes before 12 o'clock midnight, Charles Corbett is sleeping peacefully, but not his wife, Evelyn. Oh, oh no. No, don't touch me. There's no use running. You can't get away. Please. Please let me alone. You mustn't be afraid, Evelyn. You. That black beard. I've seen you before. Of course you've seen me before. Everybody does. Sooner or later. No. I don't want to see you. And I won't. Scalpel, please. What are you doing? You can't operate on me. You can't. Just hold still. After this first incision, you won't feel any. No, there's nothing wrong with me. Let go of me. No one's holding you. Get up. I'm trying to. I, I can't. No, Evelyn. Your face. Your growing beard. Yes. Evelyn. The black beard. You're the man with the black beard who's been following me. Yes, Evelyn. No. I'm afraid you're going to die. The prisoner will rise. Prisoner? I find you guilty. Guilty of trying to run away from the man with the black beard. You are sentenced to be guillotined. No. No, please, I didn't do anything. Step up these stairs, please. My husband. Let me call my husband. No time for that. Raise the guillotine. Please, give me another chance. You'll only run away again. <laughs> Head down, please. No, no, no. Oh, why do you hate me? Why do you want to kill me? Because you hate me. And for this you must die. No, I don't think it was that. Oh, I've dreamed about that man with the black beard before. Hmm? Charles, it means something. But when, when did you dream about it before? I don't know. It was about a month ago. Oh. Oh, yes. That, that, was, that was when I got my new job. That makes sense. No. No, Charles, there's something else. I can't help feeling it. 
I can't help feeling that I'm going to die. Don't say that, Evelyn. No, I feel it in my bones, Charles. I'm certain. I'm going to die. Soon. Corbett speaking. Uh, Mr. Corbett, I'm glad I got you. Central Hospital's been trying to reach you. Who? Oh, they must have the wrong core, but I, I don't know anyone there. Oh, they said it was about your wife. My wife? What about her? Uh, well, she collapsed down the street, and uh, they brought her into the hospital. Okay, okay, I, I'm going right over. Imagination. No, Charles, it's not. It was the same man. I remember his face in every detail. Oh, I don't see. Well, I guess, I guess we have to do something about this, darling. Oh. What can we do? Look, look. Su suppose, suppose we go to see Doctor Lieber. He should be able to help you. Uh, uh, no. It's no use, Charles. He's after me. The man with the black beard. I'm going to die, Charles. <laughs> I'm going to die. Can you describe the man to me, Mrs. Corbett? Yes, doctor, I can. He, he has a long, narrow face, deep-set black eyes, and a black beard. Had you ever seen him before this, uh, before you dreamed of him? No, no, I don't think so. And you believe the man you saw in the street and the one you dreamed about are the same? I know they are. I know they are. You say he nodded to you, as if he knew you. Oh, he knew me, all right. He wants me to die. You met him twice? Yes, and both times he nodded. Hmm. I can understand you being afraid of him. But I think you also hate him. You do hate him, don't you? Hate him? Doctor, I could kill him without even thinking twice about it. I see. What do you think, Dr. Lieber? If she did not hate him, the explanation would be simple. She might have seen this man with a black beard before she dreamed of him just passing in the street. And she could have had a nightmare about him. But hate... Hate is important. Hating him the way she does, that means he has become a symbol to her. A symbol? Then you don't believe he's a real person, do you? That he's really threatening me? Not in the way you mean. What we'll have to do is to find out just what he does stand for. But, Doctor, I tell you, I know what he stands for. He stands for death. I'm not going to tell you to forget him, Mrs. Corbett, because you won't. But if you'll come back again tomorrow, well, we'll see if we can't find out a little more about him. But, Charles, what are you doing here? Waiting for you, darling. We're going to have lunch together. You mean you'd like to take a look at the man with the black beard? Well, yes. Look, you, you, you say you met him right here on the street corner. Yes, right? right here. Twice. Oh, Charles, are you doing this because you believe me or because you don't believe me? Or is it because you think I've gone mad? Oh, my dearest, what a question. Well, maybe he won't show up today. Well, then I'll try again. Yes, and maybe that I can see him and maybe you can't. Maybe it's just a... Coming towards us. Well, I'll be... Oh, just, just as you described it. Then you do see him. How do you do? Uh, he spoke to me. He never did that before. Getting into that car. Hey, you, wait, wait, I want to talk to you. He isn't paying any attention. 
mansion. Charles, he's driving away. Can't let him get away. Taxi, come on. Yes. Taxi. Here, inside, Evelyn. Wait. Right. Where are you, bud? Follow that black car. We've got to see where he goes. <laughs> Listen, mister, how much longer are we going to keep tailing this guy? We're way outside the city limits. Yeah, 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 we're going to tail him until we find out where he's going. You, you haven't lost him, have you? No, he can't go much further because this road... Hey, he's turning off. Huh? <laughs> Into the cemetery. What? What did you say? The Cypress Cemetery. He's going in. Well, step on it, will you? I'm going to catch him. Don't worry. There's just this one road and the entrance gate's on the other side of this curve. There's an attendant there. He'll have to stop and show a pass or something. Holy smoke. He's gone. Hey, stop at that gate, will you? Yes, sir. Excuse me, we're looking for a big black car that just came through here. Uh, black car? There hasn't been a car through here for an hour. You see, Charles, you see, I told you. Stop it, Evelyn. I told you. Stop it. Look, there, there must have been one. We, we followed it all the way from town. A man with a, a black beard was driving it. Mister, I say there hasn't been a car through here for an hour. With or without a beard. A man with a black beard and a black car vanishing into thin air at the gates of a cemetery. But then... Where would you expect a trail to end that began with a nightmare? A dream of... Murder! At midnight! And now, back to Murder at Midnight and... The Man with the Black Beard. We find Evelyn deep in another terrifying encounter with the man who haunts her day and night. Evelyn. You? You again? What are you doing here? Waiting for you. You were looking for me, remember? You and your husband right here in the cemetery. No, no I've got to get up. This is just another dream. It's a nightmare. Is it? Yes. Look at me. I'm very real. Here. Touch me. No, no. No, you're cold. Always. Oh, why don't you leave me alone? Why are you pursuing me? It's you who are pursuing me. It's a lie. I hate you. <laughs> Naturally. I have a surprise for you. I don't want to see your surprise. Oh, I've got to wake up. I've got to. First, you must look at my surprise. Look there, right in front of you. Two stones. Three of them. The first one is your mother. The second is your brother. And the third one, do you recognize that? It's my own. Can you read the inscription? No. It says, Evelyn Corbett, beloved wife. Simple, but dignified. No, it's horrible. It's horrible. Now, if you kindly step down into your grave, our business will be finished. No, I won't do it. I won't. I don't want to die. I'm afraid I must insist. No, no, I won't. This time, you can't help yourself, even by waking up. This time, in you go. Evelyn. Evelyn. What are you doing on the floor? What is it? Oh. Oh, What's the matter? It was he again. Who? It was the man with the black beard. He threw me into my grave. Oh, no, 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 darling. You fell off the bed, that's all. Come on, here. Here, darling, help you up. Back on the bed. There. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles, if this keeps up, I'll go out of my mind. I know, darling. Oh, Charles, do something. You just got to do something. This man with the black beard, Mr. Corbett. I certainly did. He, he looked just as Evelyn described him, too. And he disappeared at the cemetery. Yes, Doctor, he did. 
Well, that isn't so mysterious. He might have gone off on a side road or something like that. But he didn't, Doctor. He just vanished into thin air. Mrs. Corbett, I want you to try to remember how many times you've dreamt about it. Now, it's important. Yes. Three times. Are you sure? Well, I... I think I am. When was the last time someone close to you died? Died? About six years ago. Who was it? It was my brother. My only brother. Were you very fond of him? Yes. Did you have nightmares then? Well, I... Yes, I think so. Did you dream about the man with the black beard then? I'm not sure. Think back. No, I, I, I can't remember. I have a feeling that I did. Only I can't be too certain. It will come to you. Maybe not now, maybe tomorrow, the day after. Let me know immediately when it does. I don't... I don't get this, Doctor. What has that got to do with the immediate problem? A great deal, Mr. Corbett. But the man with the beard is a real person. No, he isn't. He isn't a real person. But he was no, there. No, I think he's death. Hunting for me. I see. Of course, one way we can prove he's not is to get hold of him. Talk to him. Well, I'll take that job. I'll find him. And when I do, he's going to do a lot of talking. Hello. Uh, Mr. Corbett? Yes? Oh, this is the office calling. Uh, the boss wants you to uh, investigate a new case. Yeah, yeah. The body of a Mr. Hampton was found in the river today. He was heavily insured, and they want you to go down uh, to the city morgue uh, to look at the body as soon as possible. Okay, I'll, I'll go down right now. Goodbye. When was that body fished out of the river? Several hours ago. Uh-huh. Okay. You can put the sheet back. Now, what do you think? Murder, suicide, or accident? Well, I don't know yet. Hey! Hey, there he is! Here! He? Who? The man with the black beard. He just walked out of the slab room. I didn't notice. Hey, I... hey, 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 wait a minute! Oh, gone. I was taking the elevator. Right. Oh, I've got to find that guy. Come on. Down, guy. Watch your step. Did, did you just take out a man with a black beard? No, sir. But you must have. He came out of here just a minute ago. Well, maybe he walked out. It's only two flights. Oh? Where, where are the stairs? Right over there. Okay, I'll see. Hello? Uh, hello, Dr. Lieber? Yes? Th this is Charles Corbett. Anything wrong? I just saw the man with the black beard again. You did? Where? Down at the morgue. Did you talk to him? No, he, he disappeared. I ran after him, but he, he just vanished. That's too bad. We've got to get a hold of him, Doctor. Perhaps we can meet him at the street corner near my wife's office. She's seen him there several times. I have a very heavy schedule, but when's the best time? Uh, about one o'clock? I'll be there. Look, sh should I have Evelyn come too? Yes, that might be a good idea. Good. Maybe we can clear this up today. <laughs> I'm afraid. Oh, there's no reason to be afraid, dear. I'm with you, and Dr. Labor will be here any minute. Yes, well, if I see him again, I don't know what'll happen. Nothing will happen. Believe me, darling. Look, once we talk to him, here he comes. Where, Charles? Right there. Uh, Dr. Lieber. Oh, oh, I thought you... You started me. Hello. I'm glad you could come, Doctor. And I'm terrified. Doctor, do we have to do this? It's the quickest way of getting to the bottom of it. What time have we got, Mr. Corbett? I have five to one. Yes, it's just about the time he passes by. I hope he doesn't keep us waiting too long. Dr. Lieber, really, you've been wonderful about this whole thing. If it hadn't been for you, for you and Charles, I don't... Oh. What is it, Mrs. Corbett? What's the matter? Look! Over there! It's he. He really does have a black beard. I've got to get away. I've got to get no, away. Stay here. Nothing's going to happen to you. He's coming over here. Good. Oh, no, no, no. Don't let him touch me. Don't. Please, Mrs. Corbett. Good don't. afternoon. How do you do, sir? I believe you're the people who are looking for me. Oh, how did you know that? The guard out at the cemetery told me. He described you and the lady perfectly. Oh, oh look out. Oh. I've got her. Evelyn. She's fainted. Evelyn, Better take her someplace quiet where she can. Uh, my place is just up the street there. A few doors. If it won't bother you too much, we... Of course not. Show us. Here we are. But this... This is... It, it says Blakely's funeral parlor. Yes, I'm Mr. Blakely. An undertaker? Yes, a mortician. Of course. This is finally beginning to make sense. Put it down on the couch there, Corbett. Make sense? How? 
Do you know Mrs. Corbett, Mr. Blakely? I've seen her a few times in the street. We seem to have lunch at about the same time. She stared at me, and I assumed she knew me, so I nodded to her. You've had no other dealings with her? Not that I know of, no. What was your wife's maiden name, Corbett? Huh? Uh, uh, Harper. Why? Would you look that name up in your files, Mr. Blakely? Why, yes, of course. Let me see. Hadley Halton uh, Harper. Cecilia M. Died January 26, 1926. Buried... Why, that was her mother. And that's the answer. She loved her mother very much. Very much. Yes, she she was only six years old at the time, but she she always said... An age of deep feeling, without any real understanding of cause and effect. Her mother died, and Mr. Blakely came and took her away. As a result, she attributed her death to him. He came to represent death to her, and thus became an object of terror and hatred. But I, I don't understand... After all these years... She didn't remember him consciously because she wanted to forget about him. But the subconscious mind never forgives or forgets. She must have seen him in the street without really being aware of it. Then her subconscious mind went to work, started creating those nightmares. And you think that when we tell her all this and we explain... I'm sure of it. Hmm. Yes, but doctor, how, how can we explain the attendant at the cemetery and the guy at the morgue? You know, they said they hadn't seen him. Now that we know that Mr. Blakely, the bearded man, is an undertaker, uh, a mortician, the explanation is simple. He was such a familiar figure at the cemetery and the morgue that his presence did not quite register on their conscious mind. Just as we never noticed our waiter at a restaurant. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, of course. I, I see. Now, let me take a look at her. She should be coming to now. And... Lord, what is it? Doctor, what's the matter? I... I don't seem to find any pulse. I'm afraid. The strain and the shock. You mean... You, you mean... I... I'm afraid she is, Mr. Corbett. After all, when we believe someone to be death, <laughs> they can be death. <laughs> Dead of fear created in her own mind, lying on a couch in a funeral parlor. The logical place to end the story that began with a nightmare. A terrifying dream of murder at midnight. to be with us again when death steps smiling from behind a tombstone and the clocks strike 12 for murder at midnight. The part of Evelyn Corbett was played by Mercedes McCambridge with music by Charles Paul Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader.